Welcome to another AI video tutorial. Today I'm talking about the GPT open source model that was recently released by OpenAI. You can run it locally on your computer without needing an internet connection. They released two models, one called 120B, which is smarter and larger, but needs around 80 gigabytes of video card memory, and a smaller 120B that many people can use if they have a modern card with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. For today, I'll focus on the smaller one since it's the only version I can run. I'll include a link in the video description so you can read more about it. For coding tasks, they say the big model is comparable to the paid one like O3, but the smaller one isn't too far behind. So basically, you can get a smaller version of ChatGPT running locally on your computer for free. Of course, it doesn't include image generation or recognition like the paid one. But enough talking, let me show you how you can actually use it. Go to Google and search for LM Studio. The first result should be LM Studio AI. Then, depending on your operating system, you should see a download button. Use that to download and install the LM Studio software, which lets us run different LOM models locally. I'm using Windows, so I'll double click on the executable file, click Next, choose a destination folder somewhere with enough space on the disk, then click Install. After that, we can finish the installation and run LM Studio. When you run it for the first time, it might ask you to install the GPT model or the newest available one, but you can skip that and go straight to the main interface. If it asks whether you're a pro user or a developer, you can choose developer since that gives you more options. On the left side, you'll see the chat section where you can talk with the AI. If you chose the developer option during setup, you'll also see the developer tab with more advanced settings. The My Models section is where all your downloaded models will appear. I don't have one downloaded yet. In the Discover tab, you can browse and download available models. I recommend trying the staff picks, which are highlighted in purple. As you can see, there are quite a few available. For GPT models, you can find both of them here in the list. But if you're watching this video in the future, there might be other models added. Just search for GPT and you'll see both the staff picks and other available models. Both versions are here, the large model, which is too big for my video card, and the smaller 20B model, which I'll use today since I have more than 16 gigabytes of video memory. Click here to download the model. Depending on your internet speed, it might take a few minutes. When it's ready, you'll see a notification and you can load it directly if you want. I'll load it manually in a minute. The model will now appear in my models list. If you don't have enough space for storing models, you can change the model directory here. For example, I created a model folder on the C drive where I had more free space. Let's go to chat so we can try it out and see if it's any good. At the top, you can load a model. I only have one right now, but once you have more, you can choose from here and filter them. Wait for the model to load into memory. Once you're done with your conversations and you're not using LM Studio anymore, you should eject the model from memory using this eject button. Now let's load it again so we can test it. On the left, you can create folders to organize your chats. From here, you can also create a new chat. You can delete chats as well, and all your chats are saved locally. Each model has different settings. One important setting is context length. You can increase it if your conversation has a lot of text. If you forget to increase it, the app will notify you. For faster performance and lower memory usage, keep it between 4,000 and 7,000 tokens. You'll need to reload the model to apply changes. Some models also let you upload files. You can see the accepted file types right here. There's an integration section you can activate. I haven't used any of those yet, but they're worth exploring. One setting I use a lot is reasoning. When I have something complex, I set it to high so the AI thinks more before replying, which usually gives more accurate results. By default, it's set to low for faster responses. On the right, you can change the appearance of the interface and access more advanced model settings, though I haven't played around with those yet. At the bottom right, you'll find general settings. From model search, you can look for different models. Under runtime, you'll see different runtime packs. Some new models need these to be updated before they can run. In the hardware section, 
you can see info about your memory and what video card you have. Let's start chatting. I always ask each model what it can do, just to get some info about what it's capable of. The response is pretty fast, similar to ChatGPT on my RTX 4090 video card. It can answer questions from general knowledge to practical advice. It's still mind-blowing when you think you can talk with an offline app on your laptop, in a plane, or anywhere without internet, and still get access to so much information packed into one model. They say it's good for coding, role-playing, and other kinds of tasks just like ChatGPT, but not as smart, and it can't work with images like ChatGPT does. Now, it still gives wrong answers sometimes, just like ChatGPT. For example, the training data says it stops in 2021, but earlier I asked and it said 2024. So let me create a new chat for that, and this time, I'll set the reasoning to high so it thinks before it answers. I asked again, and now you can see it says June 2024. I asked for more info, and it turns out it really does have data up to June 2024. So that's the right answer. Let's go and create a new chat. Make sure reasoning is set to high and make sure the context window is big enough to fit the size of the project you want. I'll ask it to create a simple snake game all in one HTML page because I don't want to deal with a bunch of JavaScript files and extra stuff. I want it all in one page. It will start thinking now that reasoning is set to high and you can see what it's thinking, which is interesting to watch. It took 24 seconds just to think about what to do and then it gave me the code along with instructions on how to use it. Let's test it to see if it works. I'll scroll up to the beginning of the code and use the copy button. Then I'll open Notepad, paste the code, go to File and Save As, give it a name with the extension HTML. And this is important for the file type choose all, so it doesn't save it as a text file. Click Save, then go to where it's saved and open the HTML page. And this is the snake game. Let's see if it works. I press play, and it seems I can't use the buttons to navigate. So it's not as smart as we thought, or maybe it just failed this time. Let's give it a second chance. Some things don't work the first time. I go tell the GPT that the buttons don't work, and let's see if it can figure out what's wrong. I got a new code, so I'll copy that. Now I can right-click on the HTML file, choose Edit with Notepad, Press Ctrl plus A to select everything and paste the new code. Then go to File and Save. Let's open the HTML file again. Click Play and look at that. Now I can use the buttons to play the snake game. That was coded locally using a simple prompt on an AI that runs without internet. Even though it doesn't have internet, it's still censored, so it won't answer unsafe or restricted topics. Let's start a new chat and ask it a popular question. How many R letters are in the word strawberry? You can see it's thinking, since I still have reasoning set to high, and the answer is correct. There are three R letters in the word strawberry. You can also see what it was thinking while trying to figure that out. I think this thinking process is useful for learning logic and coding. It helps you understand how to ask questions and how the model thinks. Of course, you can ask simple questions too, but I suggest setting reasoning to low for those so it's faster. You can also use it to generate prompts for image generators, like a prompt for a cute cartoon cat as a ninja. At first, it was thinking too much and gave me way too many details, which I didn't need for a prompt. So I set reasoning to low and told it I want the prompt in a single long sentence. And look at that, we got a nice prompt. From there, we can refine it however we want to improve it. Now we can generate as many prompts as we need. If you go to settings and then to model search, you can look for other models or try the suggested ones to see if any fit your needs. Some models have a small eye icon that shows they can work with images too, so make sure to check those icons to see how smart each model is. The ones with a brain icon also support reasoning. So it's good that we're starting to see free models, but they're still not at the level of the paid chat GPT. For anyone who wants something free to play with, it's great. But the paid chat GPT model can do much more. It can write code, and I can give it screenshots with errors and how it looks so it can understand what the problem is and how to fix it. It can also generate images and more. That's all for today. Thank you, AI Titans, for your support. Have a nice day, and I'll see you on Discord.